Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. Glad you could be with us today. What we're talking about today, really hot topic today. So you might want to share this information uh, with all your friends and family because this is not a show you want anyone to miss. We're talking about cold and flu season, but what does it look like with COVID mixed in? We've never had this before in the Northern Hemisphere. It did happen already in the Southern Hemisphere. Nobody's talking about this. And that's why you listen to this show because we give you information you're not going to get anywhere else. So what does cold and flu season look like with COVID thrown in? A lot of good news. Isn't that exciting? I finally got some good news for you. So in March, uh, the Southern Hemisphere braced for uh, cold and flu season while fighting COVID-19. Now remember, the Southern Hemisphere is reverse of our seasons. So as we were going into spring, they were going into fall. And then we came into summer, they went into winter. So it's exactly the, the perfect scenario you would think for cold, flu, and COVID to have this massive wipeout of of the population. Didn't happen. What happened was was South Africa's National Institute for Communicable Diseases. So this is the one one, uh, site I'm uh, going to reference here. They hope to study interactions between seasonal respiratory viruses like COVID and cold and flu. Does the infection with one change the body's ability to catch another? How do people fare when they have both? But the flu season, and hopefully all these answers never came. The South Africa's National Institute of Communicable Diseases only reported one case of the flu. And that was since, uh, since the end of March. Now, in previous years, the country's surveillance platforms had documented on average about 700 cases in that same amount of time. So we're doing a flu surveillance since 1984, they said, and this is unprecedented. They usually average about 700 cases. They had one. So this is really good news. Some cases were probably overlooked because clinics temporarily closed. People had mild symptoms, didn't go get tested. So I understand there's some variable in this study here. But apparently travel restrictions, school closures, social distancing, mask wearing, washing your hands may may have stopped this flu outbreak altogether and it stopped it from spreading in South Africa. Similar stories have emerged from Australia, New Zealand, and parts of South America. So we here in the Northern Hemisphere we're kind of hoping we're going to be this lucky. Now, there's no guarantees. There's no promises. I'm just reporting the facts. This is what we're finding out in the Southern Hemisphere. Few cases in the South might mean little infection spread up North. So this is also good because if there wasn't an outbreak in the South, there's less likelihood for it to spread. Less cases means less uh, communicable, uh, the spreading of the disease. Now, the prospect of the flu season and coronavirus pandemic is pretty chilling. I've thought about this as soon as it happened. I remember back in March thinking, what's going to happen when cold and flu season hits? But because the Southern Hemisphere has largely been spared, researchers have little evidence about how it's going to influence the cold and flu outbreak. We were hoping that they would be our guinea pigs. They weren't, which is good for them. But what happens, the the big concern we have is co-infection. What happens if you have one virus and then two or three viruses infecting you at once? Is that going to make it uh, exponentially worse? But to make things more complicated, one virus can change somebody's chance of getting infected by another. Again, more good news. Uh, The good news is co-infections with flu and other respiratory uh, viruses are relatively rare, and we've known this from past experiences. Being infected with one type of the flu virus, let's say influenza A, seems to reduce the chance of you getting something like rhinovirus, which is the common cold. But we don't know if this is going to be true in the Northern Hemisphere. We don't know, but so far the news is really good. And I'm going to give you a lot more good news today too. So so I feel what we need to do is we need to do everything we can to keep our immune system strong and fight off whatever comes our way. Don't take this as a, okay, things are going to be great. I'm just going to lay back and, and, and let things happen. No, 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 no. We need to be super vigilant. And so what we're going to talk about today is what does super vigilant look like? What are the things that you can do to mitigate your risks? I know I was just on a show last week um, and I was a guest on a show and they were talking about uh, President Trump and how, you know, he had he took the steroids. He's feeling a lot better. And uh, the question they asked last week was, well, what do we do now? Do we just say, okay, it's done? No, always, always do everything you can to keep yourself as healthy as possible. That's pretty much everything I ever teach when it comes to food, when it comes to pain management, when it comes to digestive issues. Do everything you possibly can to keep yourself as healthy as you possibly can. Things are going to happen. We're going to get sick. We're going to get colds. We're going to get flu. That's going to happen. But we know we learned a new word with COVID, and it's called called comorbidity. And I'm really excited about the word comorbidity because I've been teaching this for years. 
And finally, now it's made the mainstream. And like I've always said with these shows, whatever we talk about in these shows is going to become mainstream. It always does. Been doing this for, I don't know, I've been lecturing now for about 37 years. So everything we're going to teach you is going to become mainstream. It always does. So follow my guide on this. Let me lead the dance on this one. A couple of things you want to do. CDC recommends what? Wearing a mask. I don't have a problem with this. You know, is it going to help? Probably. Is it going to hurt? No. You know, people talk about, well, I can't breathe. Now, maybe there's a rare case. I've never seen one, a rare case of somebody really can't wear a mask. And I get that. And they have, that's an exception, not the rule. But generally speaking, wear a mask. It's no big deal. Go outside, take the mask off. If you don't want to be in places where you have to wear a mask, don't go there. Is it going to be an issue? I don't know. But I always say err on the side of caution. So, you know, wear your mask. Uh, fabric masks can be purchased pretty much everywhere. Um, so you can buy them for $5. You can buy them for $10. I bought three of them for $12. Okay, it's an old Navy, as a matter of fact, not giving them a plug, but they had pretty good masks. I like them. So you can make masks. You can get paper masks. So masks are everywhere now. It's, it's common. It's no problem uh, with doing that. Stay six feet apart. I never had a problem with this anyway. I never like people getting in my face. I got my little personal space here. So this is not a big issue for me. Um, and now it's acceptable. It's kind of funny. I always thought, you know, if you walked away from somebody in the past, you think, what, you don't like me? Do I, my, my breath stink? Now it's acceptable. I'm okay with this. I mean, I don't want to breathe other people's breath anyway. I never like being in big crowds no matter what. So it's, it can slow the transmission of COVID-19. Research shows that. You can argue that all day. What harm is there staying six feet away from people? There's no harm in it. So why not do it? Uh, keep your hands clean. I've always been a, a, a big about this because it's not just viruses and germs on your hand. You can have organic compounds. You can have gasoline on your hands. You can have uh, soap on your hands and perfumes and hairsprays. And uh, these are all toxic chemicals. So I don't have a problem with people washing their hands. I do have a problem uh, if your hands start to dry out. So if you're washing your hands during cold and flu season, and your hands start to dry out, extra virgin organic coconut oil. This stuff can be used for everything. It can be used as a, you can put it on your face. It's antibi slightly antibiotic. It can be used, used as a mild sunscreen. It's not very good. It only has about an SPF of about eight. Uh, it can be used in uh, romantic situations. I mean, you could use coconut oil in a lot of different places. I do recommend organic uh, and extra virgin. And if your hands start to dry out, put the coconut oil on it. Again, it's, it's a mild antibiotic too. So there's nothing wrong with that either. Uh, if you're going to use a hand sanitizer, it has to be at least 60% alcohol. But you don't want 100% alcohol. Because right between 60 and 70 is really the, what we call the Goldilocks zone. And the reason is the alcohol can affect the virus. The virus has a coating around it of fat. So the alcohol can kind of break down that coating. But then the insides, the DNA, has to be exposed to water. And that's why if you're going to use a hand sanitizer, it's got to have some water in it, 10 to 20% water. If you're using 100% alcohol, it doesn't work as well. So that's why 60% is the magic number there. Uh, Go on, if you can, online banking, of course, I don't like touching screens and everything, even grocery stores, uh, gas pumps. What I do, and now it's acceptable, which is kind of cool, I always have some rags in my car. And I grab a rag and I, I use the rag to push buttons. I do it in a grocery store too. I put the a rag across the handles of the, of, of the cart. Um, and then I use that rag. And then when I do laundry, I always, I always do most of my laundry in hot water, uh, throw the rags in there as well. You want hot water to do what? To melt the virus, the coating around the virus. And then water hits it and it dies. Not that it was ever alive. It stops it from reproducing, I guess. Kind of weird. Viruses are weird. I'm not going to give you a class in biology today. But uh, I have rags in my car. I use them, wash them all the time. So what I do, I, you know, I have a, a, a bunch of cloth masks. I have my rags. I do my laundry. Everything goes in hot water. And we're in good shape. So there's a lot of things that you can do. Uh, limit gatherings, of course. I was never a big fan of being in, in closed, confined quarters anyway. Uh, but limit gatherings might be something you can do as well. I miss concerts. I'm a big concert guy. I like going to concerts and plays. So I do miss that. Um, and get outside. This is a perfect opportunity for you to go discover new things. Now, our main office is in Marietta, Georgia. I have offices in Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb as well. And I know the show goes all over the world. That's why I say that. It's right outside Atlanta. And I heard a story on the news the other day that the North Georgia mountains, because Atlanta's kind of north central Georgia, and then there's the mountains, the, the foothills of the Appalachians, uh, they're, they're experiencing this boom, busiest season they've ever had. People are going up there and buying properties. Uh, property prices are skyrocketing. Uh, places like apple picking farms, are, are, they can't let any more people in because they're so booked up. So I love the fact 
that people are discovering the outdoors. Go out and discover whatever is outside and wherever you are, I promise you there's some really cool stuff around you. Maybe it's waterfalls, maybe it's caves, maybe it's the beach, whatever it is, get outside and start discovering this new world that I hope sticks around because I think it's kind of cool. Now, in our offices, we're chiropractic and medical clinic, and we do chiropractic, we do nutrition work, we have medical doctor uh, and nurses, and we can do PRP. If you don't know what PRP is, folks, it's, it's going to be, okay, here's my prediction, as I, and I'm never wrong, it's going to be the next big wave in healthcare. Because what we do is we take your blood out, we spin it down in what's called a centrifuge, and we take out uh, the, the growth factors, the platelets, these things have amazing healing capabilities. It concentrates down the growth factors or the platelets, and we can re-inject it back into your body. So if there's arthritis, knee issues, oh my gosh, people with knee issues, you do PRP, they want to name their kids after you. But arthritis in the knees, the spine, the shoulder, uh, torn muscles, uh, it's just amazing because it, it concentrates your own body's healing. And I like this. Now, we can use stem cells, and we may it periodically, but stem cells are somebody else's cells. These are your own cells. We're putting them right back into your body. Way less expensive than stem cells. And I find in most cases as if not more effective. So I'm really a big fan of the PRP. Um, and so we do it in our offices, in our Marietta office anyway. So we have a lot of different services that we offer. And some of these things have to be done in person. I can't do a chiropractic adjustment over the phone. I can't do a PRP. I don't do it. My doctors do medical uh, injections over the phone. We can't do that. But we can do nutrition evaluations and we can do health evaluations. So we can do telemedicine in our offices as well. So if you're not capable of coming to see us, and I hope you are, uh, but I know that, again, the show goes all over the world, we could always do a Skype or a, a Zoom uh, or just a phone call to discuss your specific health needs. So we've gone to telemedicine as well. Didn't think I'd ever do that, but we have. So a telehealth care, I should say. So what are some of the best nutrients Kind of lay down the groundwork. These are the proactive steps that you can do. And every show we do, I talk about the proactive steps that you can do to get well and stay well. You can't administer a chiropractic adjustment. You have to come see us for that. You can't administer PRP. Well, you can't do your own blood work to determine what your hormone levels are or what your nutrition factors are if, if you have any micronutrient deficiencies. We can do that. But the things that you can do, we just talked about. And if you're just tuning in, folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Uh, we're talking about colds, flu, and COVID, and what happens now. What does it look like when we have this new, I don't know, this, 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 this uh, strange uh, wrench being thrown into the works? What do you do about it? And that's why we're discussing these things today. So if you're just tuning in, this show is going to be on my website, drjoe.com. On the website, we have over probably about 1,500 hours of podcasts, audio, video. We have articles that I've written, blogs. Uh, we answer questions for other listeners. A lot of you probably have the same questions. So we have a ton of information on the website, drjoe.com. So what you do is go to the website, type in what you're looking for, hit enter. You're going to get a ton of information. You can scroll through it. It's audio. It's video. If you want to do just audio, um, we have a SoundCloud where we store our audio. There's no search bar for that, unfortunately, but we also have YouTube, and you can search our YouTube, and YouTube has a ton of videos there that we've done, and you can search the video channel there. Uh, so there's a great amount of information that you can search yourself, but if you can't find the answer you're looking for, send the question through the website, drjoe.com, and me or one of my staff are more than happy to answer your questions for you. And uh, we get questions literally every day. In fact, driving here, I got four questions on the website. I didn't get to answer them yet because I had to do my show, of course. So let's talk about uh, those, those proactive steps that you can take. Let's talk about some supplements that I take every day. I think you should too. So these are some of the nutrients for cold and flu. Again, it's not a prescription. I'm not prescribing anything. I'm just saying this is what I do. This is what the research says. And you can follow it or not. It's totally up to you. So common cold is a leading cause of doctor visits in the United States. What's number two? Back pain. Now, as a chiropractor and a pain management specialist, I'm board certified in pain management and I'm board certified in orthopedics and I'm double board certified in nutrition. So as an expert in multiple areas of healthcare, number one reason is cold and flu. Number two is back pain. The easiest, quickest, least expensive treatment for back pain is chiropractic care. Chiropractic is the most effective, least expensive treatment for back pain in most cases. Does it fix everything? No, it doesn't. However, the major, major majority of our patients, the number one complaint they have is, why didn't I do this sooner? 
Dr. Joe, I can't believe I suffered all these years and this is all it took. Now, we start out patients with chiropractic and nutrition. We work on their digestive system. If we need to add the PRP, if we need to add a medical evaluation, if we need to add a, an appointment with our medical team, we go to that. And so we start out with the most effective, least expensive, and then work our way around to find out which is going to be best for you. So that's what's great about our office. I find it's, it's kind of like a one-stop shop in most cases. So the reason I built this clinic many, many years ago was I had one goal. And my goal was where would I go if I needed treatment? And that's been my driving force for, you know, over three decades now. Where would I go if I needed treatment? I come to our clinics. And so hopefully you'll, you'll feel comfortable there too. So with back pain, folks, just come see us. I, I don't know why you're suffering needlessly. We accept most insurances, car accidents, sports injuries. We're more than happy to work with you. If you've ever been in a car accident ever, if the car was damaged, you were damaged 100% of the time. No one in my career, and I've seen thousands, probably tens of thousands of car accident injuries, I've never seen anyone get in a car accident where their body wasn't damaged if the car was damaged. So you need to see us right away. Don't wait. Because the longer you wait, the more the insurance company is going to say, well, you weren't hurt. Believe me, I've played this game before. So follow the rules. It's easy. So back pain, come see us. Cold and flu. A couple of things that affect cold and flu. Season, obviously. Majority of colds occur during the fall and winter months, and research reveals this is uh, more than there's more than one reason for this. For starters, cold weather drives people indoors, where their exposure uh, to illnesses increases. Cold temperatures also weaken the first line of defense, which is your nose. It's dry air. Your nose dries out. Viruses can get in. That's why you have mucus in your throat and your sinuses, uh, because the viruses can get trapped, or germs or bacteria, whatever it is, even particles, can get trapped in the mucus, and then they don't make it into your body. If your nose dries out, the viruses can get into the body more easily, and, and, and uh, 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 bacteria as well. So research reveals the immune system responds slower in cold temperatures uh, than at body temperature, and the rhinovirus, that's the one that's used to cause colds, it replicates faster at lower temperatures. So we've got a couple of things all coming together as to why you get sick in the winter. Dry uh, winter air may also dry out your mucous membranes, and that can make the cold worse too. Age, your immune system in children uh, younger than six is still developing, and they've not yet developed a resistance to a lot of viruses, which is why children tend to get a lot of colds and flu. If you've been around kids, they're sick a lot. That may not be so bad. Because the body is learning and teaching them, okay, you've been exposed to virus whatever. This is how you fight it. Then virus B comes along, virus C, whatever it is, virus X. Um, and so bacteria. So the body is building the immune system. That's why it's so important to keep kids healthy. Now, the one thing I'm going to tell you right away, I'm going to jump ahead here. I'm going to come back to it. You got to get your vitamin D levels up. Really, really, really important. We can test your vitamin D levels in our office. We do something called a micronutrient test where we can test multiple different nutrients on your body uh, and we can do other blood work as well. But the vitamin D, you want it around 60 to 80 milligram, nanograms per milliliter. That's how you measure vitamin D. Really important. And as you get, when you're very young and very old, it's really important to do that, but it's important all the way across the board. Weakened immune systems, poor diet, lack of sleep, stress, food allergies, uh, overtraining, people that work out too much. And if you have a comorbidity, uh, obesity is the number one comorbidity with COVID, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, high blood pressure, these are all considered comorbidities, making it worse. If you smoke, shame on you. I know it's an addiction. I don't mean to, you know, badmouth you. Go to our website, drjoe.com. Listen to the show we did on addiction. I talk about the neurophysiology of addiction and things that you can do to help with that. But if you smoke, I know it's hard to quit. Believe me, I understand that. I've helped many, many, many people quit in my, in, my, in my career. Get your nutrient levels high. That helps with all addictions, and it's on that show we did on addiction. Uh, cold passes through uh, direct physical contact uh, with one of nearly 200 viruses that can trigger symptoms. So there's about 200 viruses, and your body's trying to learn how to fight one and fight another. Uh, someone who has a cold can pass it on to you by touching, sneezing, uh, close contact, kissing. Uh, it can spray through a cough or a sneeze. So when you're close proximity to others, wear the mask. I don't have a problem with this. Uh, once inside the body, the virus attaches itself to the lining of your throat and your nose. It triggers the immune response to send in white blood cells. And if you've built antibodies to that virus, the infection doesn't last long. However, when the virus is new, COVID-19, your body sends reinforcements to fight them, and that causes inflammation in your throat and your nose. 
With so much of your body's resources aimed at fighting the cold, you get tired. You only have so much energy to use and you're using up your energy. The good news is there's a lot of simple things that you can do nutritionally to keep your body healthy. And certain supplements I'm going to recommend uh, you consider adding to your, uh, your, your repertoire of uh, daily uh, activities. The big complaint I get from patients is, well, Dr. Joe, I forget to take my supplements. What I do is I have a little plastic uh, container. If you come to our office, we can give you some. It's a little pill box. And I, first thing in the morning I wake up, I take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, and I shake it up with coconut milk, almond milk. Sometimes I'll throw a frozen banana in there. That starts my day. And after about 11 days, this will become a new habit for you, and you'll miss it if you don't have it. So Super Greens is an essential source, absolutely positively minimum supplements you should be taking every day. Then I'll usually have ginger tea. What I do is I take ginger, organic ginger, I peel it, throw it in a food processor, cover it with about two-thirds organic lemon juice and puree it up. I have a Vitamix and I put it in there. I then take this slurry, I whip it up a lot. Ginger has a lot of strings in it, you gotta break it up. And I pour it into an ice cube tray. So in the morning I take out a ginger ice cube, I put some hot water in, I'll put some uh, stevia, you can use honey if you're okay with eating honey, and drink that first thing in the morning. Anti-inflammatory, it's a a stimulant, it's also an aphrodisiac, so be careful, I don't want to get blamed for anything. But it's a wonderful way to start your day, it really warms you from the inside. So it's a great way to start your day. Now I've got warm fluids in my body and viruses don't like a lot of heat. So I warm up my body, I put ginger in there, I take super greens and essential source. That's an amazing way to start your day. I can't imagine not starting my day that way. And then once the virus is inside the body, the, I'm doing things step one, as soon as I wake up, to help fight it off. Now, there's four nutrients I need to talk to you about. They have powerful protection against cold and flu. Vitamin C, D, zinc, and beta-glucans. If you've never heard of beta-glucans, I'm going to teach about them today. Now, they can be used uh, uh, acutely if you feel something coming on, And you want to also get probiotic fiber in there to help build the immune system. About 70% of your immune system is in your digestive system. So I take super greens and essential source. Essential source has prebiotics, which are the good bacteria. And uh, prebiotics feed the good bacteria. Probiotics are the good bacteria. So I'm going to go through super greens and essential source. I'm going to bring that up back several times as to why I feel it needs to be absolute part of everybody's day to help keep the immune system strong, especially through cold and flu season. So start your day off, do it right. Uh, Vitamin C, and I'm going to teach you some things you can do if you do start feeling under the weather. So if you start feeling under the weather, there's certain things you want to do. If you are under the weather, there's other supplements that I take, and it's very rare I ever get to that point. But we have Dr. Joe's Seasonal Tonic and Wellness Booster. Wellness Booster, I started taking a couple of weeks ago, actually. I had some left over. Uh, We're getting a new shipment in in about three weeks, the end of October. So we're going to get a new shipment of Wellness Booster in. It's Echinacea, Pau Diarco, and Olive Leaf Extract. Very good, I find, to help stimulate the immune system. Um, I take that every day. It has a little bit of alcohol in it. So if you're an alcoholic, I don't recommend you do this. Um, I mean, very, very minor, but I understand if you're an addict, you're an addict. Folks, i got to take a break. If you have any healthcare questions, send them to me through the website, drjoe.com. If you'd like to make an appointment to come see us, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. Normally, it's $375 for the first visit. That includes an exam, x-rays, consultation, first adjustment, and then the next visit, going over the x-rays and doing a nutritional plan for you. We've reduced that down to $149. This is our health stimulus we're offering to everyone. Future care, most of you are going to need future care. We accept most insurances, car accidents, sports injuries, uh, Medicare. We're going to work with you to try to get you well and keep you well. So if you want to make an appointment, do that right now. You can do it online. Uh, The website, again, drjoe.com, drjoe.com. You can call our offices, 844-44-DR-JOE, and you can book an appointment there as well. But the easiest way, drjoe.com. Again, any questions, drjoe.com. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. When we come back, the supplements I want you to take every day. Hey folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. I am so glad you joined us today because what we're talking about today is cold and flu. What does it look, cold and flu season, what does it look like when COVID is thrown into the mix? And a lot of good news out there, actually. Um, Looks like what we're doing is working. The Southern Hemisphere had winter already uh, through cold and flu season. Very few cases of flu reported, which is really exciting. Um, But keep doing what we're doing. Okay, we covered all that in the first half of the show. I'm not going to revisit that. If you want to listen to the show, this is on the website, drjoe.com. Also, if you're not following us on Facebook and Instagram, shame on you. You need to be. Uh, We live stream all our shows. We live stream this show, as a matter of fact. 
I do a Sunday night show from 7 to 9 on WSB Radio in Atlanta, and that's a live show. We do call-ins there as well. Um, and so uh, we live stream those as well on Facebook. So make sure you're following us at Dr. Joe Esposito, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, and that's your, that's your admission, by the way. I, I get a lot more people following me when I, when I say this. I, it's kind of cool. We give you all these shows for free. The website, tons of information for free. I'm going to give you a cover charge. Your cover charge is follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Dr. Joe Esposito. It's a pretty simple thing to do. And I'll give you all this stuff for free. I'll give it to you for free anyway, but that's going to be your homework, okay? So let's go jump in right now on the supplements that I take every day. You probably should too. So research supports using vitamin C during cold and flu season to reduce the duration of symptoms. Higher doses you take, the better results during a cold to a point. You have something called bowel tolerance. You can only take so much vitamin C until you get diarrhea. So if you're taking mega doses of vitamin C, if you start getting loose stools, cut back to 80% of that. So what I tell people is build it up a little bit at a time. Take a recommended dose, then double the dose, then double the dose. You will get loose stools. Back it off, okay? And you don't want to do this for long term, uh, and especially different types of vitamin C. So as a general rule, I don't recommend high doses of vitamin C every day. Liposomal form, liposomal vitamin C is probably the safest form to take if you're going to take mega doses. Uh, I don't recommend long-term chronic doses of vitamin C supplements because it can cause nutritional imbalances. So mega doses of anything, short term, okay, long term can throw off the balance. So for example, if you take large doses of vitamin C, and many times they call that ascorbic acid, which I'm not a fan of, by the way, on a regular basis, it lowers your level of copper. So if you already have deficiency in copper and you take high doses of vitamin C, that can weaken your immune system, exact opposite of what you're trying to do. So temporary mega doses of liposomal vitamin C to combat a case of the cold or flu might be helpful. But giving it on a daily basis, a mega doses is not a good idea. In Dr. Joe's Essential Source, I told you I was going to visit this a lot today, we have 100% of the recommended doses of vitamin C. So if you're eating a good diet, like citrus fruits, bell peppers, uh, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, uh, butternut squash, papaya, sweet potatoes, fruits and vegetables basically, are going to give you lots of vitamin C. Then you're taking Essential Source. You should be getting a lot of vitamin C. If you do get sick, you can mega dose on liposomal, but only for about three or four days then I recommend cutting that out. So health occurs, if you don't know why this all works, I'll give you a little science class here. So hang on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this quickly. I don't wanna bore you here. But there's, you have to have an interchange of something called electrons in your cell. I'm gonna take you back to grammar school chemistry here. If you have bad electron flow or interchange, the body gets sick. So electrons are the things the body needs and the cell can die. Oxidation caused by free radicals causes the loss of electrons. So free radicals are like Pac-Man. Remember Pac-Man? Waka, 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 waka. They're eating through things. So Pac-Man is free radicals. So along comes uh, electrons, uh, free uh, antioxidants that kind of stuff up Miss Pac-Man's mouth and she can't eat anymore. And they stop the damage from happening. So free radicals are, are the things that shut off Pac-Man from doing the damage. So antioxidants counter the disease process caused by oxidation, remember oxidation, breakdown of things, waka waka, loss of electrons, by supplying extra electrons. Vitamin C is a major antioxidant and perhaps the most important electron donor there is. Now another important electron donor is glutathione. So I take glutathione supplements every day because it, as you get older, you produce more free radicals, you have, le you have less uh, antioxidants. So glutathione really helps the liver heal, and the liver is the, is the main filter in the body. So I take glutathione every single day. You probably should too. It's on the website, drjoe.com. So the supplements I'm talking about are all available on the website, drjoe.com. You can order them. Uh, we'll ship them to you. Joe's in charge of shipping, so he'll get them out to you. Better yet, come by and pick them up. If you're in the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb, and we'd love to have you come by and say hi. And it's going to save you shipping. And this way, uh, Joe, I don't have to pay Joe as much. So I'm trying to cut Joe's salary here. No. <laughs> no, Joe gets paid no matter what. But I want to see what we can do to save costs. We're going to have to raise our prices on the supplements, folks. Unfortunately, we haven't raised them in years. And probably soon we're going to have to raise them just a little bit. So now's a good time to stock up. So I'm, I'm giving you fair warning. Don't say I didn't tell you. Uh, our suppliers, prices are going up. We haven't raised them, I don't know, 10, 15 years. So we're going to have to do it soon. So, uh, But the essential source has the super greens, uh, has the, <laughs> has the uh, vitamin C in it. Super greens is also a great source of antioxidants. And then the glutathione is another great source of antioxidants. So vitamin C is remarkably safe and effective for treating viral infections. We don't have a drug 
to treat viral infections necessarily, but we can get your immune system working better. So high dose of vitamin C neutralize the free radicals. They kill the viruses. It strengthens your immune system. So taking it routinely is a good idea. That's why another reason I recommend essential source every day, it's a great source of vitamin C. So vitamin C, good. Short-term mega dose is fine. I wouldn't recommend it long-term. It affects copper absorption and copper helps the immune system. And so now you're being counterproductive. Vitamin D. If I had to give you one supplement that you should take every single day, especially from you know, when the sun starts to change, when the hot days of summer are gone until the hot days of summer return, vitamin D. Low vitamin D also increases your risk of contracting cold and flu. There was a study that was out a couple of weeks ago. I talked about it on this show and the show I do on Sunday nights on WSB Radio, 7 to 9 live in Atlanta, Eastern Standard Time. You can catch it at wsbradio.com if you don't have a radio. And I answer questions then. I take questions from my listeners because uh, that's a live show. We, we have callers there. We don't have that c- capabilities here. Um, study came out, normal vitamin D levels, 50% reduction in the risk of getting COVID. One day, one report, that was all I heard. So that's why you listen to this show, because I give you all that information you're not going to get anywhere else. Vitamin D uh, product produces in your skin is to sun exposure. It's a steroid hormone, powerful antimicrobial activity. Wipes off the bad guys. Capable of fighting bacteria, viruses, and fungus. Not a lot of drugs do that. In evidence, the evidence is clear, low vitamin D levels the higher the risk of developing cold and flu. And now the studies are kind of jumping on that with COVID as well. So decrease your risk, decrease your vitamin D, you increase your risk of comorbidities. The new word everyone's learning since COVID came out. Comorbidities, obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease. Low vitamin D is associated, not causing, but associated with all of these other comorbidities. And if you're overweight, you need to take more vitamin D. Because vitamin D is fat soluble. What that means, it's, 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 it gets absorbed and utilized more efficiently in fat. If you're fat, I used to be fat. I can say the F word. If you're fat, you need to take more vitamin D. But the best thing to do is get your vitamin D levels checked because too much vitamin D is dangerous too. I take 5,000 international units of vitamin D. Okay, I'm six foot, about 175 pounds. So I take five uh, drops of Dr. Joe's vitamin D every single day. I had my vitamin D checked a couple of weeks ago. I was at 58 nanograms per milliliter. 60 is ideal. So I was right where I needed to be. But I'm going to bump it up a little bit. I'm now taking eight to 10 drops a day. Now, also vitamin D, we get this question a lot with uh, testosterone. You need vitamin D to build testosterone. So if you're low in testosterone, if you're low in free testosterone, um, you need to make sure your vitamin D levels are up there too, gentlemen. Uh, and ladies, so not a bad thing to do. Bump it up a little bit. And we can test you with vitamin D in our offices and we can get that along with other nutrients to see if there's any deficiencies. And then we can customize a plan for you. But generally speaking, five to eight drops of vitamin D every single day. Can't imagine a day without it. Researchers believe vitamin D offers protection by increasing antimicrobial peptides in the lungs. Peptides are like proteins. And that may be one of the reasons why cold and flu are most common in the winter when sunlight exposure, therefore vitamin D production, is at its lowest. So that's been a a theory that's been around for a long time. We get more sick in the winter because we have lower vitamin D. So take a supplement. Ideally is get out in the sun, but you can't get the vitamin D in the winter because the UVB rays hitting your skin aren't strong enough to interact with cholesterol to create the vitamin D. So what do we do? Take vitamin D supplements. See how easy this is? It's the least expensive insurance policy you'll ever buy. Now, our vitamin D also has vitamin K2 in it, and vitamin K2, we find, works synergistically with vitamin D to make it work even better. When I design these things for you folks, I'm thinking of the least least expensive, most effective thing we can do that's going to cover most health issues. And that's why on our website, we have very, very popular supplements because people love them because they get great results with them in most cases. I can't guarantee anything. Everybody's different. But we have male hormone balance. We have female hormone balancing. Uh, we have estrogen regulators. We have vitamin D. We have B vitamins. B vitamins, folks, absolutely positively. I don't know if I have time to cover it. You have to have normal B vitamins in order to keep your immune system strong. I take Dr. Joe's B complex every day and we have B vitamins in the essential source. The good news about B vitamins is you're probably not going to overdose on them. They're water soluble. So if you take, you take a lot, you'll pee it out, it turns yellow. Hey, that's great. I did a good job. I, I took enough B vitamins. My body's utilizing everything that it needs. 
But B vitamins, also very important. So vitamin D, vitamin C, which you can get from the essential source, the glutathione, which is a separate supplement. See how we're building a protocol for you? Dr. Joe's seasonal tonic, if I do get sick, it's, it's uh, ginger, horseradish, cayenne, pepper, onion, and garlic, pureed in an apple cider vinegar. I'm not claiming a cure. I'm claiming what I do because all those things are antibiotic, antiviral, and antifungal. So it's things that I do to keep myself healthy, no guarantees, no promises. I'm not making any, you know, swears by this. Uh, seasonal tonic, I take it every day in the winter. Echinacea, powdiarco, and olive leaf extract, stim- extract stimulate my immune system. Tastes pretty cool, too. So um, it has a touch of alcohol in it. It's funny. I had a child one time, a four-year-old, drank a whole bottle of it. And uh, I thought the kid was going to get drunk. Never did. It was fine. Um, but there's just so little alcohol in there. But I thought, and it has a, a, a kind of a tingly taste to it. And I thought, why would a child drink a whole bottle of this? But they did. Kids, what are you going to do? So we're talking about vitamin D now. I digressed a little bit there. Uh, one person uh, would be spared. <coughs> excuse me. This is an important statement. So I got excited. According to international research team, one person would be spared from influenza for every 33 that take a vitamin D supplement, regardless of everything else, just a vitamin D supplement. One in 33 would be spared the flu. One in 40 who received the flu vaccine, it can prevent the flu. It's according to researchers, not me. So among those who with severe vitamin D deficiencies, one in four people taking vitamin D supplement would be protected from the flu. So it's pretty simple. Okay, now I'm not saying don't take a vaccine. No, don't not take the vaccine. But this researcher, quoting them, one in 33 people would be spared the flu if they take vitamin D. One in 40 would be spared the flu if they take a vaccine. For optimal protection, get tested. Again, we want to get it right around 80, 80, uh, 60 to 80 nanograms per milliliter. Uh, if it's not an option where you live, take the oral vitamin D supplements, please, folks. Uh, unless you're living along the equator, you know, South Florida, chances are you're going to need it. And we have uh, the vitamin D3 with K2, um, which makes it work even better still. So if you feel sickness coming on, if you're coming down with a cold or flu, you can take a mega dose of vitamin D of 50,000 international units a day for three days. Again, these are just little tricks you can do. Uh, No no guarantees, no promises. But if I feel a little sick, I'll take 50,000. International units. Again, that's 50 drops of Dr. Joe's vitamin D with K, uh, vitamin D with K3. Um, it's a lot because it's 1,000 dro- uh, units per drop. So um, it's a lot, but you do it for three days. There's still a possibility that vitamin D doesn't work, even with mega doses. If you've never been exposed to an antigen, if you've never been exposed to the virus or the germ, um, ultimately uh, you might get sick because your body doesn't know what to do with it. You can also take four grams of liposomal vitamin C every hour until you feel better. That's a lot. You might get diarrhea from it. So just be careful. Zinc. Got to talk about zinc. Zinc is one of my favorite supplements. A third nutrient deficiency, cold and flu season, zinc. Uh, It can reduce the duration and severity of cold, especially at the first signs of infection. If your body has no way to store zinc, which it doesn't, so it depends on a supply every day. So good sources of zinc, aside from supplements, what might they be? Beans, chickpeas, if you like hummus, that's great. Lentils, tofu, walnuts, cashews, quinoa. Now, you can get zinc from meat. You can get zinc from oysters, which please don't ever eat. My God, oysters are like shellfish are the worst of the worst. When Moses wrote Leviticus, here's a distraction. When Moses wrote Leviticus, way back when, Leviticus is a part of the Old Testament, a part of the, the Bible, and, and, it, and, and I think it's part of the Quran. It's part of the Torah. And Moses talks about what to eat in Leviticus and had a high, not personal hygiene. And he said, don't eat shellfish. Because even then, when the water was clean, shellfish are filters. They live on the bottom, they filter out all the heavy metals, the viruses, the toxins. When you eat the shellfish, you're eating concentrated toxins. I can't imagine why you would do that. If anything, if any animal product, don't eat the shellfish. My gosh, that's the worst of the worst. Fish should have fins and scales and swim. So that would mean bottom dwellers? No, not a good idea. Sharks, don't have scales, not a good idea. Um, Eel, don't have fins. So that's why when Moses laid it out, he laid out guidelines on what to eat. Those held true, even to today. So you can get zinc from eating oysters, but you can also get a lot of other things. So you can get it from eating lamb, you can get it from eating other meats. I wouldn't recommend doing that. The good news is Essential Source has 100% of the daily dose of zinc in it. So if you're eating a good diet, Uh, you know, it's going to be beans and chickpeas and tofu and walnuts and fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds, and you're taking essential source, you should be getting plenty of zinc. Now, you can get zinc lozenges, 
and you can suck on a zinc lozenger because the zinc, what the zinc does, the zinc binds to the virus and prevents the virus from reproducing. Now, hydroxychloroquine, you may have heard about that. The way that works is it gets into the cells and it changes the cell permeability to allow zinc into the cell where the virus is living to bind to the virus to protect it from reproducing, prevent it from reproducing. So zinc is really important. Zinc increases production of white blood cell, which can fight infections. It also helps your immune system release antibodies. If your body has inadequate zinc stores, and again, it doesn't store it very well, you will experience increased susceptibility to certain infections as white blood cells can't function without zinc. Don't take too much zinc. Too much zinc is toxic. So too much vitamin D is toxic. Too much vitamin C is not good. So again, you got to hit that Goldilocks zone. Now I'm throwing a lot of stuff out at you today. If you want to listen to the show again, and I think you should, go to our website, drjoe.com. You can type in COVID. I guess Joe will list it under COVID somewhere like that. Yeah. Uh, Type in his search bar COVID. You'll be able to listen to this show. Uh, Again, I'm not making promises. I'm not saying I have a, a guarantee for curing anything. These are the things that I do based on my 40 years of research. So So zinc affects multiple aspects of your immune system, cytokine production, gene regulation, lymphocytes, white blood cells, does a lot. So zinc lozenges may cut the duration of cold and flu. uh, uh, As with other nutrients, it's best to make sure you're getting enough zinc in your diet year-round. Of course, eating a good plant-based diet, you're going to get plenty of zinc. However, if cold strikes, you can use zinc lozenges. There was a meta-analysis done of seven randomized trials. So they took seven randomized trials and said, what was the results of all these things combined? And they concluded that zinc lozenges shorten the duration of the cold by 33% on average. Zinc acetate might be slightly better than zinc gluconate. Uh, Zinc sulfate, not a good idea. So again, acetate or gluconate is the best choices. Sulfate's not a good idea. Um, And so you can suck on zinc lozenges, which I do if I start feeling like I get a sore throat. And I carry them. I have a bag that I carry all my radio and television things in. I carry my makeup in there. I carry my headsets in there. I carry my, my podca- uh, tripods and everything, my chat chargers. And I actually have zinc lozenges in there. So if I ever get a little uh, under the weather, I'll just pop a zinc lozenger. And so that's a pretty safe thing to do. Again, short term. You don't want to suck on them every day. That's too much. And that can have an adverse effect. Beta-glucan. These are polysaccharides that you find things like in mushrooms, shiitake, mataki, oyster mushrooms. Um, and nutritional yeast. Beta-glucans in health enhance something called natural killer cells. So this, this is why you're seeing a lot of uh, mushroom supplements kind of coming out now. We may actually come out with one ourselves because of the beta-glucan. Now, there's also beta-glucan in oatmeal, not the same kind. But nutritional yeast, I like it. Um, it does have a lot of glutamic acid in it. So if you're susceptible to headaches and you do nutritional yeast, The glutamic acid is like monosodium glutamate. It might trigger a headache. So use nutritional yeast. I recommend you use it all the time. If you get headaches from it, don't use it. Mushrooms are great, though. I have a great mushroom uh, gravy recipe in my book, Eating Right for the Health of It. I have over 200 recipes in that book. Uh, Prescription for Extreme Health is another book that I wrote. It's really, it's a guideline. It's It's like an owner's manual for your body. I know that's been used by another author before, but it really tells you how to deal with your body. And so both those books are on the website, drjoe.com. We also have them available. Uh, We can send it to you as as an attachment too, so you don't have to buy the physical book. But beta-glucan, unbelievable stuff. One study, uh, associate professor of medicine and uh, biomedical data at Stanford University, the first biomarker that shows up on a whole uh, shows susceptibility to influenza. And what they're finding is that the the beta-glucans can fight those markers. Uh, on whole, those immune cells consisted of 10 to 13 percent natural killer cells. If you have 13 percent, uh, 10 to 13 percent of natural killer cells in your body, uh, you don't succumb to the flu. With those who had natural killer cells less than 10 percent, wound up sick. Again, it's not a guarantee; it's not a promise, but the beta glucan can help as well. So you see how many, there's so many things you could do. Proactively, you have to cut out sugar. Now, when I say sugar, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, you have to stop that. Not cut it out, cut it back, cut it out. And the problem is during cold and flu season is what do we have? We have parties. We have Halloween. Here's my prediction. I'm right every year. Right after Halloween, people are going to start getting cold and flu. Watch it. It happens every year. They start to get better. Thanksgiving comes along. Week or two after Thanksgiving, people are sick again. Christmas comes along. Week or two after Christmas, people are sick again. New Year's comes along. And then finally, we're getting into the cold and flu season, wrapping it up as spring comes out. I promise you, It happens every year. I've given this lecture every year for decades. You will see people start to get sick when they start dumping all the sugar into their body. 
So here's my secret. Get the bad food out of the house. If you have breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas in the house, you're going to eat them. Everyone does. I do. I'm vegan, so I have to be vegan, of course. But you got to get them out of the house. If you don't, chances are you're going to get sick. So if it's not there, you're not going to be tempted. You want to get a lot of water in the body. You want to make sure you're taking supplements. My supplement protocol, once again, super greens and essential source, vitamin D, uh, beta glu- uh, glutathione, I'm sorry. Uh, I eat mushrooms on a regular basis, beta glucan. Uh, make sure you're getting all these things into your body, B vitamins, every single day. I take omega-3 fatty acids as well to bring down inflammation in the body. Um, so there's other supplements. I've customized a plan for me, and we'd be more than happy to customize a plan for you. But I threw a lot out at you today. Again, this show's on the website, drjoe.com. If you have a health issue, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, uh, arthritis, we have a, a, a one-stop shop for wellness. We start people out with chiropractic care, most effective, least expensive treatment for pain. We do a consultation. If you're a chiropractic patient, most people are, we move them to the chiropractic division. If you have severe arthritis, we may add to that PRP. PRP, platelet-rich plasma, we take the platelets out of your blood, spin it down in a, in a centrifuge, and put them back into the body. Amazing things are happening with this research. And I promise you, this is going to be the next big thing in healthcare. It has to be. I'm going to make sure it is. So everything I've ever predicted, from margarine being the number one cause of heart disease to now this, staking my reputation on it. So come see us if you'd like to make an appointment. If you have arthritis, if you have degeneration, the knees, the shoulders, the spine, PRP might be the way you want to go. Sometimes we need to do medication. Sometimes we need to do injections to calm down an inflamed joint. And then we can do the PRP. Then we can do the chiropractic. So it's not just one or the other. You're getting everything in one clinic. And so if you want to make an appointment, you go to our website, drjoe.com, and you can book right online. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. We only offer the medical services in our Marietta office. But again, that's not a lot of visits, maybe one or two visits, maybe three. Normally, we charge $375 for that first visit. That's an exam, x-rays, consultation, uh, first adjustment, again, chiropractically, and then going over the x-rays and the nutrition evaluation. We've reduced that down to $149. Most of you are going to need more treatment than just one or two visits. So we do accept insurance for future treatments. Uh, We accept Medicare. One of the few clinics in the world, I think, that still accept Medicare. We are very good at working with car accidents. If you've ever ever been in a car accident, I'm on my knees begging with you, please come see us as quickly as possible. Because what we're seeing now, the courts are way backed up with, with lawsuits. So the insurance companies, and I don't know if this is why they're doing it, I'm projecting here, is they're saying if you don't get treatment right away, and even in Florida they do this, if you don't get treatment in the first two weeks, the insurance doesn't cover it. So you might want to consider getting to us right away. Anyone in a car, including children, need to be seen right away. Because car accidents, if the car was damaged, you were damaged. And you may have permanent damage from that for the rest of your life if we don't get to the cause. Not getting you scared. I'm just telling you the facts. So again, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. The website, drjoe.com. If you want to make an appointment, you can do it right online. You can call us at 844-44-DR-JOE. We're more than happy to set you up an appointment. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Tell your friends about the show. We'll catch you next time.